This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 3, Episode 234 of Jumble Think. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Jumble Think, where we interview amazing entrepreneurs about their journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, we're going to give you some tips on how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality, too. Our guest on today's episode is Jill Raff. More about Jill in a moment. Whether you're a new listener or a longtime fan of the Jumble Think show, you can catch all of our past episodes by going and checking out the podcast. You can subscribe by heading on over to your favorite place to listen to podcasts. For Apple Podcasts or iTunes, go on over to jumblethink.com slash iTunes. And for Spotify, jumblethink.com slash Spotify. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to Jumble Think. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have a great episode lined up for you today. Today's show is being sponsored by our friends over at opportunityinchina.com and Penji. Here's a little bit more about Penji. Penji helps startups, agencies, and marketing teams achieve more with unlimited graphic design support at one flat monthly rate. Their easy-to-use online platform pairs you with a professional designer and lets you create as many design projects as you want. Think of it as your monthly subscription to top-notch design. No contracts, no hourly billing, just fast, simple, and affordable graphic design for all of your needs. Use the code JUMBLE, J-U-M-B-L-E, to get 15% off your first month of Penji. So head on over to Penji.com and use the code JUMBLE to get 15% off your first month. We also want to thank our friends over at OpportunityInChina.com. Here is more about them. At the dawn of the 19th century, forward-thinking people moved to the commercial centers of Europe. Moving into the 20th century, America welcomed millions into the land of freedom and opportunity. It is now the 21st century. Many of the successes and fortunes of our generations will be made in China. To learn how you can seize opportunity in China, follow the Opportunity in China podcast. The Opportunity in China podcast is available anywhere podcasts are streamed. Or you can visit our website at opportunityinchina.com. I am super excited about today's guest. Her name is Jill Raff. She's been a guest on a Facebook Live last fall with us. I met her at New Media Summit. Well, who is Jill? Jill is the founder and driving force behind the Jill Raff Group. She is a highly experienced CX strategist. That stands for customer experience. She's also a published author. For over 25 years, she has been delivering world-class customer service and experiences. As a business strategist, she is highly sought after and can often be found sharing her experiences as a speaker at high-profile events. She is obsessed with ensuring businesses find their long-term success by keeping customer connections at the heart of everything they do. Let's welcome today's guest, Jill Raff, onto the show. We are with our friend Jill Raff today. She's done a Facebook live with us. We called it the B-side. Now she is here doing a episode of Jumble Think, which is super, super fun. Jill, thanks so much for being on with us today. Oh, thank you, Michael. It's great to be here to speak with you. You know, we met back in New Media Summit, what, in Austin, where you're from, uh, back in September. Our journey's been fun. We've had you on the show. We've uh, reconnected again in Tampa at New Media Summit there. You, one of the things I love about you and about what you do is your story into entrepreneurship. It struck me as like very atypical of most people's childhoods and most people's journey into saying, hey, maybe business is right for me. Tell us about that. Uh, It's true. You know, uh, only recently did I realize that I grew up with entrepreneurial parents and it just was kind of my, my what you know a lot of times right it doesn't seem like anything special or big deal because it's what you know it's your life but um now as i've built my business and i realize my foundation came from that childhood and that is that my parents and grandparents opened mcdonald's number 150. wow and uh, so you know mcdonald's has always been true to my heart and whether people like it or not um It's not about the food per se. It's about the systems behind it. It's about the values behind it, the culture of the company. 
And I very much grew up in that. And, um, you know, the treatment of both your employees and your customers and seeing, watching my dad, and, and I hear stories still about how my dad always looked you in the eye and wow. he always would call you by name and even refer, ask about your family and your kids by name and just really an exceptional role model. And my mom too has done many things as an artist, but um, a great businesswoman as well. So I feel really blessed that that truly was my entree and my, my world of entrepreneurship was just a part of my daily life. I uh, have been known to like McDonald's quite a bit. Uh, we don't go every day. We don't go multiple times a week by any measure, but it is a place that our kids love. And for me, what's interesting, and, and I think this is a good segue into what you do, we've been to a lot of McDonald's where we're just like, eh, it's McDonald's. You get the food. It's good. It's solid. Sometimes it's not good, but most of the time it's, it's McDonald's food and it's good. There's one McDonald's down the road from us uh, in one of the neighboring towns. Drive down for our daughter's running groups, and it's a couple blocks down. You, you, you head out, and afterwards, you know, we're going down there to grab a quick meal with the family. You go in, and it's just a different kind of experience. Even for McDonald's, they have a killer play center. They treat customers well. It just has a different feel to it. And for me, that personifies what you stand for, which is about customer service. You can have the same product, but the fulfillment of how it's run is vastly different even in the same product. In this case, McDonald's. It could be any kind of restaurant or business that we, we encounter. But why do we see in places like McDonald's such a vast difference in hmm. experience when it is a proven track record, a proven model that if you work the system, McDonald's should succeed no matter where you're at. But yet we see that some flourish and, and are special while others are just another McDonald's. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said, if they follow the proven system. Okay. And um, and part of it is location. In all fairness, real estate, you know, the, the old adage, location, location, location. And that is very true. Um, you know, where you are in McDonald's is always being in the real estate business is also very particular about where they expand and open based on location, cross traffic and all of that. But getting down to the experience that you have at the store is really, um, I think, driven by, like anything, it starts at the top, the leadership. And have you hired the correct people? Have you trained them according to the values that you've established and that you expect of your employees so that they're engaging not only with each other, but with the customer, the end customer, the way you want them to? And if you follow that, and of course, that's going to make such a difference. <laughs> it's interesting that my mom actually was telling me the other day still that the memories that she has, she said there was not a McDonald's we would see in all of our travels over the years that your father would not go into and basically critique along the way and see, are they doing what they should be doing? Are the, is there a line of customers? Is the store and the lot clean as their garbage laying around, all of these details. And so these are things that even for me, um, and as a kid, or when I first moved to New York, I would see stores that were terribly run. And I would ask like, who, who owns this? And I'd find out it's a corporate store, for example, or if, if it was a, you know, an individual owner operator, I just thought, oh my gosh, it is unbelievable to me that it's being run this way. And my dad would have a fit and it drove me crazy because it wasn't being run the way I knew McDonald's established their values and how they treat their customers. Uh, we need to define what you do. You are a customer experience expert. And part of that learning comes from your experience. You just shared that story with your dad and everything uh, with uh, going out and seeing different McDonald's and, and how he ran it versus how some of the other owners run their McDonald's. Why did you stay the course? You, you mentioned your grandparents, your parents, uh, early McDonald's owners. You mentioned that you grew up in that culture, but why did you stay the course of entrepreneurship and why customer service? 
You know, um, I followed my dreams in terms of my interest okay. and when, so I've, I've actually had several careers across different industries, but each skill set, each experience built on the previous one, which I think is very common in life. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it really wasn't until I moved from Manhattan, from New York city to Austin that I realized I'm at this point, I've had so many great experiences across multiple countries and across industries. And there's so much more that I can give and do. And I looked at everything that I had done previously and the common thread there, Michael, was delivering the best experience for the customer, always putting your customer's interest first. And it just like a bell went off in my head and I thought, oh my gosh, this is my foundation. This is where this comes from. It was just a work ethic and a, a value system that was instilled in me from early on. And it wasn't really a conscious decision or choice. It was just the way I lived my life. I love that you say that you're following your dreams and your passions because that's what we're all about here at Jumbo Think. Mm. But often it gets hard to do that. Uh, I know that even for us with the podcast, there are times where we're uh, struggling with whether it's finances coming in at the right timing or whether it's uh, securing the dream guest or something like that or, or getting more exposure for what we're doing for you in this, this transition from New York to Austin and solidifying this is what I'm going to do. I'm putting my flag in the, the sand and this is what I'm going to stand for. This is what I'm going to do. What are some of the obstacles that you've been facing in that pivot and what are you learning about when you, when you push into that to help uh, build the business you're building? Oh, wow. Great question. You know, because I've pivoted several times before, I've kind of gotten the swing of things. And I do use the knowledge and the skills and the education experiences that I've had in previous careers. And I think this time it was a bit of a challenge because, well, I, the last thing that I, that I had when I left New York was I had built a real estate business. And okay. so when I moved to, to Texas, to Austin, I got my license here as well. So I'm, I'm still currently a real estate agent. I'm licensed in, in both New York and Texas. But I've also learned that leveraging your business, especially in that business, is really important. So I, I still keep those active and I leverage them where needed. And it was in some ways like it, it was starting over and I never thought that that's what I would be doing, but it was, I took the skills, uh, I decided what I wanted to do. I kind of, you know, like anything, I do a brain dump and mm -hmm. kind of sort things out and I kind of saw it, I'm very visual. So I, I saw it as like putting all these ideas and background and, and experiences and education and languages and et cetera into this funnel. And the extrusion from that really became this customer experience business and looking at the patterns and that were repeated over and over. And so that just really was like a red light flashing, like, oh my gosh, Jill, this is what you're about. This is what drives you. This is what lights you up. And, and so then it was a matter of, okay, now let's find the best source of people who I know that I can help, that I can can look at their business model and utilize this roadmap. I've created a customer experience transformation process. And by taking them through that, find out where are their pain points right now and how do we apply all the different strategies that I've learned across industries that could be utilized in their specific industry, which maybe has never been done before, but why not make sense, give them the advantage, help people stand out and help them grow and, and scale and increase their revenue, their repeat customers, their increase their retention. Turnover is a big problem. And so helping them do that through putting people first and making those genuine connections with people and really understanding it is ultimately about your customer experience. And in fact, you know, studies have shown that 89% of people will switch business to your competitor following a poor customer experience. Yeah. So why let them walk away? You know, it's a lot more, way more expensive 
to uh, retain, to keep, I'm sorry, to um, get new customers than it is to retain your current ones. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned here that in the pivot and in the, the transition from New York to uh, Austin, you're leveraging your business. Some people won't realize what that means. Uh, and I want to take that one step further. It's sure. one thing to have the resources to leverage your business, but we're a lot about um, people who are turning their dreams and ideas into reality. And for some of them, they're going to be leaving careers. They're going to be stepping into the unknown. What is it that they have to leverage when they're making that pivot from from employee into entrepreneur, from uh, what they've always known into something something new? Sure. I think it's really important to grow that you leverage your business. And in and, and doing so, I mean that you look at kind of like the 80-20 rule. So rule, what is it that you do really well and that you find you do with efficiency and high productivity and makes a difference and takes that step forward in your business? And so if you stick to that 20% that you do really good and that you love to do, think about the time that you do things that you know you can do, but you don't really like it it ends up taking you so much longer because you don't like it. And it's not really the best use of your time and resources. You know, there's a great saying that I keep reminding myself because after doing so many things, I, I think I'm quite capable, but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Mm. And so I think it's really important to look at what you should be doing and the best use of your skills. And you do that piece. And then you find other people who can do the other part. So when I say leverage, I mean like have some, so for example, in my real estate business, so I have a great, really great teammate in New York and I love the people connection. I love that relationship. I love the negotiations and those are my strengths. And so I do that part and I leverage out the pieces that to me is more of the day to day on the ground kind of just, um, logistical things that have to be done, but they don't have to be done by me. Yeah. Right. There's no advantage to the customer by me doing it. And so those pieces, as long as I know that my client or customer is being well taken care of and in the way that I would for my brand and my brand promise, then those are the pieces that I'm going to leverage out to someone else who's working with me or representing me or on my bench and then I do the pieces that I know I can really add value to the end customer. I can relate to that from my own business where what I'm best at, or at least what my team has told me I'm best at when it comes to the web stuff, uh, I'm a good developer, I'm a good designer, I'm solid in both of those, but I'm incredible with customer relations and building those relationships. And so for me, as I built my agency, where I needed to focus most was on the FaceTime with people, whereas our developers, you know, I could come in and help solve and problem solve something or designer give feedback on what was working, and what wasn't working. But where I excelled was that face to face and and uh, just meeting with people. How can people really find what it is that they have to leverage? Because some people may be looking at it and going, I'm new to business and I don't know where to take this leap. I don't even know what it is that I really have to leverage. How can they take stock and really know what those places are that they should be focused on and how they could build out that team? I think looking back at whatever they've done in life, like I got there was by looking at the patterns. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage others who are interested in taking that leap to look at what they've done in their life, whether it's in business or whether it's in school or whether it's in odd jobs here and there or internships, look at for the patterns of things that they've done, that they've done well, that they've gotten feedback. What is, what have people that they've worked with, their bosses, what, what kind of feedback did they get from them? And take special note of that and then say, okay, did, did I love that? Was it something that I could see going forward? Is this going to create a lifestyle that I want for myself? So I think it's also very important when you're building a business to say, is this going to require me to work 24 seven or is this going to be something that, um, like, like in real estate, people expect you to be accessible pretty much all <laughs> yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, you know, forget your weekends. <laughs> um, and in fact, ironically, you know, when I, I loved fashion as a kid 
but I didn't grow up really doing art at that point in time. And so I never thought of myself as a designer and the entree into the fashion world growing up in Columbus, Georgia of all places, <laughs> was uh, retail, you okay. know, and, um, and my mom really discouraged me. said, Jill, that's a terrible lifestyle. You know, when you're, busiest days or everyone's holidays, you yeah. know, when they have all the sales. And I was like, oh, she's so right. And so I kind of shifted and I won't take you through all the details of my life in college and, and things that I did overseas that kind of led me to realizing, you know, I could be a designer. That's a great way to do it. I love it. And so I ended up going after University of Texas, I moved to New York City and I went to Parsons School of Design yeah. and I did become a fashion designer. But that was the thing is that I, I kind of, followed what I thought I loved to do, but then I had to think about the lifestyle. And so, you know, there are certain things where do you want your weekends available? Do you want your holidays available? You know, so it's thinking of what's the demand going to be for that particular industry. And is that something that you want for yourself? So I would encourage people to consider that as well as they're putting together things that they've done that they like how is that going to play out in terms of you ultimately being happy doing um, the things that you've chosen to do? How are you finding purpose in what you do? I, I, I think for me, purpose is a big one. So thank you for asking that. I, I think that should really be the underlying thing. And for me, I think the acknowledgement that my knowledge and experience and my services that I'm doing are so needed and they're so applicable and when I hear people say to me, wow, I, I, I love this customer experience transformation that this process that you've created, like, how do we work with you? And when I hear past customers on, on Facebook, when I'll post something about my, my beliefs around the customer experience that they, they write back, I've had a, a client write back, Jill, you embody great customer experience. Wow. And it's like, oh, oh my God, this is what it's about. This tells me that I am serving my purpose and there's a need out there and I'm fulfilling this need and in a way that impacts people. And that to me is what matters most, that I can make a difference for people. For you, what is one challenge you're currently working to overcome in the business? I think <laughs> probably having too many ideas and okay. directions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can make you crazy. You get, can go into overwhelm, uh, you know, not fully completing something or shooting as, as someone said, you know, don't should all over yourself. You know, I should do this or I should do that. And, um, and I think really learning to chunk the ideas or chunk the, the steps that I need to take to get where I, where I want to go in order to have more focus. Uh, I'm looking for some support right now, even a VA to leverage a lot of the things that I'm doing because I'm, I'm working as a solo agent, although I have great people on my bench. So if I am meeting with a client who has needs that are not in my wheelhouse, I do have fabulous professionals um, on my bench working me, with me for that. But I, I think that the biggest challenge is maintaining that focus because as a creative person, um, the ideas are always flowing and they're easy to kind of get sidetracked on. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. For sure. And as you're making this pivot, as you're building the Jill Raff group, as you're, uh, you've made a physical move and you're doing all this other stuff, what's the next big goal you have for the business? I'm really excited about this video series that I'm working on. And it's actually been birthed from a radio program who has offered me to do a radio show. And, um, I'm going to be building this series and putting it onto my YouTube channel. So I'm really, really excited about that. I know there's um, a lot of great information and exchange of uh, conversation that can be had. And um, so stay tuned. Look forward to that because I'm, I'm really excited. It's going to be good stuff. Super, super cool. We will be back with Jill Raff to talk more about customer service, her seven-ingredient customer experience transformation process. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot more in how you can actually build a business all around customer service and providing the best service. 
Exciting things are happening here at JumbleThink. We would love to have you be a part of them. One of those things we're looking forward to, Idea Camps coming this fall. What is an Idea Camp? It is a three-day event to help you go from idea and dream and into reality. During the event, we will help you create your roadmap, your battle plan for the future of turning that dream and idea into reality. You'll be able to take it home, put action to that plan, and actually see your dreams and ideas become real. So head on over to jumblethink.com slash idea camps. That's jumblethink.com slash idea camps to learn more about idea camps and how they can help you. We also want to thank our friends over at opportunityinchina.com for sponsoring today's episode. Have you been looking for a way to change your career or social prospects? Do you see the world around you changing and haven't quite figured out what path you should take? You are not alone in seeking opportunity. Visit opportunityinchina.com for access to scholarships to attend university in China. Or if you have a bachelor's degree already, opportunityinchina.com provides access to jobs in the educational sector all across China. Now, working in China is not only often well-paid, but it will place you among one-fifth of the world's population, boosting your social network, bringing you more deeply into the story of globalization, and opening up doors you never knew existed. Seize your opportunity now. Visit their website for more information at opportunityinchina.com. We also want to thank our friends over at Penji for sponsoring today's episode. Penji helps startups, agencies, and marketing teams achieve more with unlimited graphic design support at one flat monthly rate. Their easy-to-use online platform pairs you with a professional designer and lets you create as many design projects as you want. Think of it as your monthly subscription to top-notch design. No contracts, no hourly billing, just fast, simple, and affordable graphic design for all of your needs. Now here's the deal. If you use the code JUMBLE, J-U-M-B-L-E, you get 15% off your first month with Penji. So head on over to Penji.com, that's P-E-N-J-I.com, and use the code JUMBLE to get 15% off your first month. Now let's jump back into our conversation with Jill Raff. We are back with Jill Raff. All right, Jill, I know some people are going, I have a business. I don't feel like I connect with my customers. I don't feel like we're offering great customer service, but we're trying to build something awesome. And we know that the people we serve are the ones that we should be building our business for. So how can people connect and find with you? So find you because you have some great resources. You have some great information, including your CX checklist. How can they find you, connect with you, learn from you, engage with you, and start this process of really building customer service into their business? Thank you. Yes, I really uh, welcome conversations with anyone about what's going on with their business. And my website is my name. It's www.jillraff.com. Dot com and my last name is R like Robert, A double F like French fry, and so that's my website. And you can feel free to write me directly, and it's Jill at JillRaff.com. And I'm I really am excited about offering the CX checklist. CX is acronym for customer experience, and so you can find that at JillRaff.com forward slash CX checklist. Super cool. I recommend going to check that out. Jill knows her stuff. And if you're looking to be better at customer experience, Jill's the person to go to. So we want to continue this conversation. I am from the world of web, as uh, we've all discussed. I've worked there for uh, what 15 years now. I understand UX, which is all about user experience from a design standpoint, from a functionality standpoint. CX is a new term to me from uh, your our conversations, from uh, finding your resources online and reading through that. What is the foundation of good customer experience? What is it that defines that it thing, that, that it just has it, that X factor as we say in pop culture, what is the X factor of customer experience and how can we make that magic happen in our business? I think the thing that defines it most, you will know if you've done it well, if when your customer leaves, hangs up the phone from your coaching phone call, walks out of your restaurant or your store, whatever it is at that moment when you part from your client or your customer, 
that they are feeling. And it, and it truly is a feeling. It doesn't have to be screaming in their face during the experience, but just that they walk away with that feeling of, wow, I have this, I, I feel really light and airy and I have this great smile on my face and I'm not sure why, but I love it and I'm gonna tell everyone about it and I can't wait to come back for more. And I think that's really true in so many things that people, and, and when applied to business, people are going to buy emotionally and they justify and rationalize logically after mm -hmm. the fact. So when you connect with them human to human and you serve them from a place of really truly wanting to serve them and help them with whatever they're, they've come to you for and not for, okay, it's, a, it's another ticket sale or a, you know an, another table turned or you really are looking to help them as a person, they're gonna feel that. Like right, the famous Maya Angelou <laughs> quote people will never you know they won't remember what you said or what you did exactly but they'll always remember how you made them feel and it is so true and you know i think how do you achieve this well that's we could go into a lot about that but it's certainly through making sure that you have a system in place so that you're delivering consistent experience every time so they know when they come back they're going to experience the same or similar, it won't be exactly the same because there'll be different people, but the same type of feeling and emotion that they have because ultimately in business, when you apply this, consistency equals cash. All right, so that's good. What are some practical tips people can do to take stock about where they're at in that process with their business? They've been doing this maybe for 10 or 15 years. They're kind of going, some things are working, some things aren't. How can they really step back and have that objective eye to say, all right, we're on the right place. We're in the right uh, uh, trajectory for what we want to do with our business or how they can take stock and say, we need to shift things. And then how can they make those changes? Mm, great question. So for someone who's already, you know, well into their business, there's always going to be ups and downs and, and, you know, little hurdles along the way. And I think it is important to take stock, to stop and say what's going on in our business, because there is this stat by Bain and company that to me is just screaming of ways business can help themselves. And that is 80% of entrepreneurs, executives, business owners, think that they are delivering an outstanding customer experience while only 8% of customers would agree with that. That is a huge gap. It is a very dangerous gap to live in in a business. And so I think it's really important to do a check that your perception is the same as your customer's perception. And that's, that's what I do is I, I provide that bridge from like the owner sitting on a small private island to the customers in their mainland to say, are we on the same page? And if not, where do we need to fix that? And so that's where my process comes in. And I think the first thing you need to do is stop and say, where are our core values? Do we have our mission statement established? And within that mission statement are our values around the customer. Do we honor our customer's decision to do business with us? And for business, guess what? Your employees are your customers as well. So the first step is making sure that you've established those values and that every decision that you make going forward is in alignment and reflected back to that to those values. And then the next step would be your hiring, right? Are you hiring people with that same value, those the character and the value, so that then you can educate them according to what you want your specific brand promise to look like to the customers. And, and it goes on from there, but I think it's really important if you're having problems and you're already in business just to stop and say, who do we have in our house now? Who is representing my business to my end customer? And maybe we need to do what I call a strategic asset review. Maybe we need to go in and, and find out what's really going on, not based on my perception, which clearly according to Bain and company is way off from that of the customer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. That's huge. I mean, the perception gap of, of the, the, the delivery of what customers are experiencing. We had a, a good friend of ours who would always say the audience is the hero, 
But often business owners, like you're mentioning here, think that they're hitting the target and they're not, that they understand their customer. What are maybe some practical steps on the questions they should be asking their customers to make sure they're delivering on the promise that they're they're offering or the service they're offering or the, the product for that matter? I think first and foremost is to ask right? okay. how often people are not even being asked. So I, I think that's the big one. I, you know, I repeat it many times in, in my count in my consulting is, is just ask in most cases, people are happy and willing and want to give you their feedback, mm. but more times than not, they're not even asked. People walk out, people hang up, and you don't have a way to reach them again. So from the beginning, I would figure out a way within whether it's your your POS system, you know, with whatever software you're using, to re- realize and recognize when someone's come back a second time. When are they a repeat customer? And as you encourage and train and educate your staff to engage with your customers, find out some personal information, find out what's important to them. What's their favorite food or drink? What's their favorite gene? What size are they wear? Um, you know, in coaching, how do they want to be communicated with, you know, what are their needs? Whatever it is, little things, even birthdays and anniversaries, their dog's name, little things that will make someone feel like, Oh, I'm not just another cog in the wheel. I'm not a transaction. Mm. I very much believe we need to transform transactions into interactions. And when you do that, you're creating a relationship with your customers. And that relationship, I say a real relationship, creates those connections. And it is that genuine connection between person to person that equals profit. Connection equals profit. And so it's it's finding out those specific details, using them when the customer comes back again. And even those small, simple things, looking at them in the eye, smiling at them, greeting them by name. Uh, I forgot who it is that says, right, that the most beautiful sound in any language is the, that name of that person themselves. And so use their name, be personal, don't overuse it, don't be salesy about it, but just be genuine. One of the things that I've experienced in my own business, and it's, I think, one of the struggles that many business owners, especially in the service space, encounter, is that we take on projects that we shouldn't have taken on. We take on projects because the client is going to pay instead of taking on the project because we're the right person for them, or for that matter, that the client is the right person for us. How can we really take stock of who we want to serve, who we can serve best from our giftings, our abilities, our, our, our products, our services, and then make sure that we're connecting with the right people? How can we connect with them? So I, I think, first of all, when you're putting yourself out there, that you need to be specific about who you serve and get in front of those people. So you're going to resonate with them directly, immediately. And, you know, you raise a really good point, Michael, because so often people are driven by the the financial decision instead of, can I serve them and are we best suited for each other? Okay. And yeah, and and I, I think it is really important to look at that because at the end of the day, neither side is going to be happy if they are not the right people for you. And and for me, it goes back to the, even those core values. So for the people that I serve, it's not so important what industry they're in, what segment of the market they're in. It comes down to mindset. Are they the kind of business owner that values people first, that they want to put people first in their business and recognizing that that is the fastest path to success. And if they feel like, you know what, there's just, there's a need in the market. I'm not all that. It's not really my thing, but I see where I can make some money and let's just turn this out. Let's you know see how many tickets as quickly we can turn. <laughs> let's, you know, get, get customers in and out and not worry about what the experience is for them. Well, then that's not someone that's going to be the best person for me to serve. And quite mm-hmm. frankly, I, I don't want to work with someone like that because I know I wouldn't be able to help them. We wouldn't see eye to eye. And you need to, I think, also find out, is that person going to be accountable? Yeah. 
are they open and um, willing to work with you to listen to what you're saying, to apply it, to challenge it. And, and if it doesn't, you know, you have some issues, then pivot, mm. you know, do they have that tenacious mindset? But at the end of the day, I think it's, are you in alignment with the same values that they have? And if so, how do we then, um, meet up so that we can help them in the best way possible? And, and I've, you know, early on, uh, my, I remember my first real estate client, I was Good gosh. I thought, okay, <laughs> this is God's way of ch challenging me. Do you really want to be in this business? Wow. Because it was, it was a nightmare. But, um, one thing that I also learned that I feel strongly about is you want to be able to have enough clients coming to you saying, I resonate with what you're saying. And let's talk about how you can help me so that you can say no to those people who are not right for you. Yeah. So good. You have a process called the seven ingredient customer experience transformation process. Tell us about those seven ingredients. Sure. Um, so the, it starts with what I mentioned earlier, which was the, um, the core values and the, you know, the mission statement. And the next one is your aligned asset aligned hiring. Are you hiring people that are in alignment with those values and, making sure that they have the right personality types. Now we need all personalities for every aspect within your business, but then using tools to figure out, you know, assessment type tools and, and interviews and um, even working with current employees to see where do they fit in culturally? Are they a part of your, your business? And then also based on their personalities, where do they shine? Mm. You know, you don't take someone who like, for example, in the disc profile, someone who's in the SC is going to be very analytical, very systematic. You would probably be want them to do something that's more um, not interfacing with the customer. And you're going to want to put someone who's like on a DI type personality engaging up front with your customers and someone who's maybe an SC, maybe you want to have them doing some paperwork or <laughs> admin or, you know, something that's the, that type of, um, tasks so that they're going to be happy doing what they're doing. Going back to what we talked about before, if you're happy and you are utilizing your innate talents, then you're going to thrive and you're going to be most productive for your business and you're going to be happy. And so you're not going to be looking for another job. So that's great with, with your hiring. The third one is that strategic asset review I, I referred to before, which will help with the 80, 80 to eight uh, delivery gap of what's going on, the perception helping to fill that gap. And this is where I would go in and look at the way the business is being run and do um, in-depth interviews with everyone from your, your top stakeholders, your owners, your top management, your C-suite, um, your GMs, depending upon your business, all the way to your customers, and even down to perhaps even the janitor or the dishwasher um, mm. and your customers. So really getting a full picture and analysis of what's truly going on in your business, not what you think might be just because you're busy, doesn't mean that you're being productive and doesn't mean that there's not still room for a lot of growth. And I think that's unfortunately a, a problem that a lot of businesses feel like, well, I, you know, I'm doing pretty good and my seats are full or you know, we've got so many turns or, you know, enough, you know, clients coming in, but are you working in a way that is maximizing? Is there still room for growth and for scaling? Um, and so then the next one is your onboarding um, and ongoing training. So it's one thing to onboard correctly and to make sure that you're making that connection. You know, I just was speaking to someone yesterday who had signed up for a, a, a program that both of us were involved in. And she's like, I didn't get an onboarding email. I don't know who to contact. I got nothing. And so it, it's really important to have your systems in place so that when you do start business with someone new, that you have a process to bring them in, to engage with them right from the beginning, let them know what the expectations are, what the process is going to be, and that you keep the ongoing training. So it's not enough to do a boot camp and then forget about it, but you have to keep it front of mind. And you know, with that in mind, it's important you know, every so often to do an evaluation. Is what we thought would work, is it being, is it successful? Is it productive? And if it's not, no problem. 
we're not going to get it right every time. That's how we create something. And we have to always be changing and staying current anyway. So let's evaluate what's happening. Let's get the insight from our employees and even our customers. There's that ask again. Ask them what's going on. What worked for you? What didn't work for you? What would you like to have happen that you didn't experience? And when you do that, then you create another set of guidelines and then you re-implement. And that becomes a perpetual process. And you do that over and over and as you grow and you make sure that you're meeting the needs of all of your people, your vendors, your employees, and your customers. And then lastly, Michael, is the um, compelling call to action. And you know, it, it, this is where my, my multi-industrial um, <laughs> experience comes in because in some industries, the call to action is huge. In others, you don't ever experience it. So why not? I think that people want to give back. If you've given them a great experience, there's that universal reciprocal law, law of recipro uh, reciprocity, right? So yeah, yeah. we want to reciprocate. Tell us how. Tell us what we can do for you. And, and ask again, did we complete um, your expectations to a level where you feel like you can give us a great five-star review? And if not, it's better to know right then and there before they walk out of your business or they hang up the phone. <laughs> how can we earn that, right? Yeah, what did yeah. we do wrong? Tell us how we can earn it. And, and lastly, the fortune follow through, so important. So much business is lost and left on the table because you, you have them once, but the lifetime value of a customer is so much more important. Your retention of an employee is so much more important and that's following through to make sure that you are delivering what the expectations are. Super, super cool. As we wrap up this segment, can you remind people how they can find and connect with you? Yes, absolutely. You can write me directly, jill at jillraff.com. And my website is jillraff.com. And Raff, again, is R like Robert, A double F like French fry. I know it can sound like an S or other letters <laughs> <laughs> without seeing it written down. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Please write to me, and I look forward to having a conversation with you about what's going on uniquely in your business. And you can find all of those links on the episode notes for this show. Simply go to jumblethink.com. Links will be right there super easy to check out. We will be right back with Jill Raff for our rapid fire questions. I often say that isolation is the death march of entrepreneurship, but it applies to those people who are wanting to chase their dreams and ideas too. Here's the deal. If you have a big idea and dream, don't do it alone. You need to be in community with other people just like you that have big ideas and dreams and want to make them a reality. Where can you find a community like this? Well, head on over to any of our social media channels and let's get connected. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. To make it even easier, head on over to jumblethink.com. You'll find links to all of our social media channels. Let's get connected. Let's do this journey of chasing ideas and dreams together. And let's together change the world. Now let's rejoin our conversation with Jill Raff and jump into rapid fire questions. We are back with Jill Raff. All right, Jill, are you ready for rapid fire questions? Yeah, I am ready. Bring it on. Nice. As a <laughs> child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to work in fashion, as we talked about before. I always loved fashion. What is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? I would list out all the things they love to do, the things they hate to do, the lifestyle they desire for themselves, the pros, cons, and then see where the patterns fall and knock off the things that you don't want and keep the things that work. What is one big lie about entrepreneurship you would like to break? <laughs> That your time is your own and you'll have a lot more of it if you work for yourself as an entrepreneur. What is one change you'd like to see in the world? I would like to see that there's not only acceptance and tolerance, but actual celebration of our own, everyone's uniqueness, that we have more connection with people, that ultimately we share the same basic values and needs and that we have this human connection and love and kindness for one another. What do you want your legacy to be? 
A contribution of bringing more people together, connecting people, having a less stressful life, a happier life, and realizing that by putting people first, that they'll have better experiences and it'll make for a happier, better world. Where do you find inspiration? So I would say um, what would be meeting successful people and, and who are also giving back to their communities and the world and who my inspiration, I would have to say my mother who at 87 is still creating works of art and oh, wow. trying to exhibit worldwide and amazing. And, and even my sister who just is constant inspiration. She's dealt with so many health issues in her life and yet she is the most positive, fun loving adventurer that I know. What is one book you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read? I love The Soul of Leadership by Deepak Chopra. And um, in short, he combines business with mindset and consciousness. And I think that is just so important because what, what he feels is that basically when you've made this connection with your soul, that you have unlimited access to basically the most vital qualities that a leader can possess, which is your creativity, your intelligence, love, and organizing power. How do you define success? To me, success is having happiness, that feeling of achievement and pride in achieving your goals and living to one's full potential and purpose. Hopefully in doing so, preferably giving back and impacting others in some way. What is one trend you're currently excited about? I think the trend towards efficiency, but while maintaining that human element. So mm. tech can never replace that, but using technology to do the mundane rote tasks that will allow us then more time to connect with people as people. What is one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? I think having accountability, uh, someone that can help you keep that accountability and also a planner, something where you can do a total brain dump and then break things out into detail in order to, to um, achieve your goals. What is one thing you wish you would have known when you first started out? That it doesn't have to be perfect or 100% complete. Nice. <laughs> it's always a work in progress. Yeah, for sure. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing I would be volunteering for causes that I believe in that need support and with from others in order to succeed. And our final rapid fire question is what is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? I think working full time, helping others without concern of, of making money. That would be my ultimate goal. <laughs> nice. I like that one. As we wrap up, our episode today, we always like to leave our guest have a final thought. What is your final thought for us today? Michael, I think it's wrapped up in transform transactions into interactions, because when we do this, we'll make a kinder, more connected world. And when it's woven together in business, it will help everybody that touches that business, as well as the community at large through giving back. So it's this beautiful, perfect synergistic cycle. Jill, thanks so much for taking time out, sharing your story, your experiences, and also giving us a powerful insight into the world of customer experience. Oh, it's my pleasure. Anytime, Michael. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. In a moment, we'll be back for some final thoughts on today's episode. Let's start. Ce disque sera pour vous un rempart. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode with Jill Raff. I have to agree, customer service is one of those things that we are uh, losing in our culture. We see people as a commodity that can be thrown away, and we really need to get back to a place of valuing our customers, valuing those relationships, nurturing them, and cultivating them. Building relationship has been how I built my web agency through networking groups and people I met. We didn't do any marketing on social media back then when we started out. We didn't do any marketing uh, through other channels. We simply built our business on the relationships we had. I would recommend for you to try that too. If, you, if you're missing that in your business, step back and say, how can we nurture the relationships we have? How can we build uh, customer loyalty and and just that commitment to each other that we're going to take care of them and they're going to use us as their provider for their needs. 
I'd love to hear how you incorporate customer service in your vision, in your dream, in your idea, in your business. Make sure to shoot us a message, hello at jumblethink.com, or jump on any of our social media channels and let us know what you think about how customer service impacts you as a consumer or impacts you as a business owner. We have some exciting news and I wanted to share it with you. We've been working on becoming part of some really cool events, and I'm going to be telling you about some of them in the weeks to come, but the one that I wanted to tell you about today, the one that I'm super excited to be a part of is called Podcast Row. It's where you can actually come and be on leading podcasts with leading podcasters. You get your story told, and you get to be a part of their show. People like James Alcatcher, Greg Clunas, Jeremy Ryan Slate, and I'm going to be there too. Here's what you need to do. Head on over to podcast-row.com. The link will be in the episode note. Check it out and apply. It's super exclusive. They only take 16 guests to be a part of this event. You want to be there because not only are we going to be there, but that event is going to be promoted by some great organizations, some little places that you may have heard about, places like Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur, and Forbes. You should be a part of it. Get your story told. Get your business story out there. Tell us about your journey. So head on over to podcast-row.com to learn more about that event and to apply to be at the event and get interviewed with some great podcasters. I think you're going to love it. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there too. We have some killer guests lined up here at JumbleThink. On Tuesday's episode, our guest is Tamara Lur. She's an author. She's written a book called Bounce is BS, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. And the conversation is all about the fact that we are approaching life from a wrong angle. We need to be looking at how we incorporate our personal, our work life, our self, all into a blended mix that incorporates each other. How she's built her businesses is really fascinating. How she incorporates her family into business is a really cool story. You're not going to want to miss this episode. We talk about many, many things, but it's going to give you a new perspective on how you think about starting your business, how you're thinking about running your business, how you interact with business and life. You don't want to miss this. So make sure to check that episode out this Tuesday. Now, where can you check it out? Well, you can, of course, check it out on all of our podcasting streams like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play. Well, pretty much anywhere where you listen to podcasts. You can also check it out on radio. And if you're wanting to know where you can check us out on radio, you can head on over to jumblethink.com slash podcast. You'll see all of those channels listed. We just got picked up in Washington, D.C., So if you're in Washington, D.C., if you're in Long Beach, California, if you're in Tampa, Florida, if you are in Macon, Georgia, if you are in Colorado Springs, Colorado, or Milwaukee, or Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or any number of other places you can catch us on radio, make sure to tune in and listen to our show there, too. Well, that does it for today's episode with our guest, Jill Raff, and it's your turn. You have amazing dreams. You have amazing ideas inside of you. You were created for something special. You were created for purpose. And I hope that you take the risk, that you take the step to move past a dream and idea and start moving into a world where you create those dreams and ideas. It is a journey that is filled with fear at times. It is a journey stepping into the unknown. It is a journey of discovery, but it is ultimately a journey that is worth taking. So today, I want to encourage you. Think about the dreams inside of you. Think of the ideas that are burning inside of you. Think of those things you know you were created to do. Begin to take those steps forward to make those dreams and ideas a reality. We believe that you were created for a time like this, that you were created for impacting this world, and the world needs people like you who are willing to dare to think differently, to live differently, to step into new possibilities, and to change the world around them. So dream big and change the world around you. Mais complètement. En avant, en arrière, sur les côtés. 
êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.